Hey everyone, welcome. Um, hey, are you the kind of person that has had profound change with the Enneagram and you find yourself constantly sharing it with others? You just can't help it because it's giving you so much clarity internally and it's changed your relationships that you find yourself wondering if maybe becoming a coach is the best path for you. Well, here's the good news. I have a three part mini course that is developed to help you understand what coaching is all about. In this three part, we cover why the Enneagram and the Gospel are the best tools for transformation, three mistakes that you're gonna wanna avoid when using the Enneagram or leading others, and a simple and fast approach in becoming an Enneagram expert and what that path of becoming a certified coach is all about. Now, what's really cool about this course is that it is designed for anyone, regardless of how much you feel ready to know about the Enneagram or maybe you're just a newbie, that's totally fine. So whether you're a seasoned enthusiast or just getting started, this mini course is equipped to help you guide others through their journey with the transformative tool of the Enneagram. So if this sounds really interesting to you and you're that kind of person that can't stop talking about the Enneagram, then I highly recommend that you get this free mini course. Now, all you gotta do is go to yourenneagramcoach.com forward slash mini course, one word, and get your free course there. Today, I am super excited to have one of our very own certified coaches, Jackie Brady. And Jackie um, has had a passion for the Enneagram and uses it in ministry. And the other thing I want you to know about Jackie is that right now she thinks she has COVID. <laughs> it's so sad. I'm like, oh my gosh, what a beautiful type two who's showing up <laughs> even when she's got COVID to bring her passion and all the things that has meant so much to her in using the Enneagram for herself, but also passing it on and helping others. So Jackie, welcome so much to your Enneagram Coach, the podcast. We're so delighted you're here. Can you just tell us a little bit about yourself, um, where you're from, and how you even got interested in the Enneagram in the first place? Well, well I'm from Northern and I, Probably. You may have been my introduction to the Enneagram. Oh, fun. I don't remember if you came first or um, Suzanne Stabile's book, but they all kind of meshed in together <laughs> yeah. and it was like, oh, there I am. Right. Except it was also, and and there I am. Oh, and there <laughs> I am. <laughs> so it, was, it was quite a process to figure out, to finally land on the two. Yeah. Because at first so you nine. you thought you were a different type, is that right? Mm -hmm. I thought I was I was a nine for a good year yeah. because I don't have that. I think I'm a two, but I'm a lazy two <laughs> because I just don't force my help. I might get out of my deathbed to do a podcast with Beth, but I don't really. Um, I've never, you know, childhood junk. I've never really had the confidence to put myself out there right. and force my help on anyone. Yeah. But in my heart, it's like, I need to go help them. I need to help them. Yes. So, yeah. And sometimes it comes out when I alphabetize my daughter in law's spices <laughs> in her cupboard to try to make her life more efficient. Right. Yeah. You're using a little bit of that one wing as well, like, you know, discipline. Yeah. And the three, efficiency. Right. Um, well, and that's, I think twos and nines um, get mistyped quite often. Uh, usually it's a nine who thinks they're a two. Um, but it can be the other way around, especially if those that are listening are familiar with the tri-type um, uh, concept. Uh, Jackie, you know, if you have type nine in your tri-type, that would make a lot of sense of why as a type two, you might not have the same gusto um, or perseverance of inserting your um, uh, advice or support maybe like a type two that has a type one or type eight in their tri-type. Now, if you are out there and you're like, what is tri-type? Just <laughs> look up tri-type, uh, one word, and Catherine Favre. Uh, she's got a great YouTube video on it. She's the pioneer of the tri-type. Um, but all that to be said, Jackie, does that kind of sound true that maybe nine might be in your tri-type? 100%. Mm -hmm. Anytime I take a test, my nine is the higher number. Yeah. But it, it's truly the two that wins out in the end. Yeah, it's the core motivations of the two. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. 
Well, and what was that experience like? Because I think there's a lot of people, more than probably people want to admit, that they mistyped from the very get-go because they were maybe looking at outward behaviors and dynamics and may not have been fully aware of the, either aware of the core motivations of each type, which is what our type hinges on, um, or just not aware of it of their internal world themselves and it took time to even get there. What was your process like? That was exactly it, not being fully aware of my internal world because my focus is always on everybody else's world. Yeah. And so I didn't um, know the true me. And then when I saw the, the part about two that just really pushed me away was that, oh, what do you mean I'm not altruistic in my love for others? I am not serving to be served. I do not, I'm not hungry for love. What are you talking about? Yeah. Until I sat back and realized, in fact, it was when I had COVID the first time, it really cinched it for me because I was immobile for a month. I lost a whole December one year. Christmas wow. didn't even happen. It was just like, I don't even remember it. And as I started to get well, uh, how, oh, I was worthless. I am, I've lost my identity. I can't serve anyone. I can't help anyone. Yeah. I can't take care of people. How can I possibly be loved if I'm not serving? And so things started to, you know, mind, body, and spirit all work together. And when one gets broken, the other sort of maybe wake up a little bit or they get more broken. But in my case, it really helped me to look inside and see what was really there as far as my need for affirmation. And then the shame of it. I was so ashamed mm. until I feel like, wait a minute, there is not one thing wrong with needing to be affirmed. Right, right. That's, God put that there and he left it there. He could have cleaned that up, but he left it there because he wants me to come to him. Yes. Affirmation. Right, right. And so when I was able to bust through the shame, mm -hmm. I could see myself crystal clear. Ah. I don't have to be ashamed of my, my two-ness. It's, it's who he made me to be, right. and it plays into my ministry and how I do life. So Yeah. Well, and just to kind of um, paint a broader picture for people or a clearer picture, for those that are maybe either new to the Enneagram or they can't remember what a type two is, they're the nurturing supporter, and they fear being rejected, unwanted, unloved, not needed, inconsequential, um, dispensable, but they desire to be wanted, loved, and appreciated, but they have the core weakness of pride. Now, this is where they um, see everyone else's needs and emotions and negate their own, and they um, move towards others with their helpful support, usually confidently. Now, of course, with Jackie, we're talking about how she's got a lot of nine in her, so she's not going to be as confident as other twos. They usually confidently um, know what others need, and they want to offer it to them in some form or fashion. And the whole reason is for their core longing. They long to hear and experience, you are loved and wanted. And and for the two, part of that is, well, I have to be able to give and serve and know what people's needs are, know how to come through for them in one form or fashion, because that's the only way that they will appreciate and love me and I'll have worth. So Jackie, that kind of sounds like goes right along with your COVID story that you couldn't give and serve, like you were down and out. Is that where that shame kind of welled up and the fear? Yeah. And, and just a total realization that everything I'd been denying was really true. Mm. I really do um, base my worth and value on what I do, mm -hmm. not on who I am. And as my number three husband fell into number his number two wing, <laughs> right? Um, ooh, let's not say number two. Let's say my number, my type three husband leaned into his two wing and um, really took good care of me, Aww. but it really was hard to take because I'm supposed to be the caregiver. Right. He's great at it. He did a wonderful job. He'd never complained. And he, the only thing I could taste was orange juice. So 
he had that orange juice by my bed all that's so sweet yeah what was it like you know just just for those that are out there that are type twos what was that learning experience like because i know that there's there's the the misaligned parts of our heart that wounded part of our heart that wants to pull ourselves up by our bootstraps and say, no, it doesn't matter that I have COVID. I've got to help. I've got to serve because what if I'm not loved, you know, if I'm just down and out. But then there's that beloved part of our heart um, that is more healthy and knows, no, I mean, God loves me, sees me and wants me even in this state of where I'm at. And he's here to serve me. But not only that, he's given my husband to serve me and love me. And that you get to embrace that. Now, I'm sure it was a push and pull dynamic the whole way through, but just guide some of the other twos that are out there, what it was like to to actually feel the ability to surrender to actually the healthier side and accept another person's help and love and to be needy and that it's okay. What was that like? Oh, it was awful. <laughs> <laughs> Growth is always so hard, isn't it? <laughs> At the point um, of being ill, I had no choice. Mm -hmm. So I was kind of forced into the submission of, of being the one with the needs. Afterwards, when I started to feel better um, and, and wanted to be out of bed and wanted to do some things and couldn't, that was when it really hit me. Mm -hmm. um, but I think... Like like today, for example, when I'm not at a hundred percent health wise, yeah. uh, the difference is now a couple of years later, I am here not because oh they asked me to help, I have to help. I'm a two. I need to get out of bed. I need to buck it up, pull myself up by my bootstraps. Mm -hmm. It was more of this is outside of my comfort zone. I don't want to do these things i don't you know <laughs> let me empty the trash you know let me do the background stuff i don't like being um on camera i mean i don't this this is uncomfortable for me but it was um being more healthy too i could say even if i don't have the strength and i don't feel like i have anything to offer i know i was asked for a reason and i know that you guys made what you do in prayer yeah and so I just felt like, okay, this is what I'm supposed to do. And I need to step out of my comfort zone, mm -hmm. even if it means I don't look like the greatest helper or the greatest coach. Yeah. And I can just be real. Absolutely. And I love that. And I think, you know, we know that God is sovereign and knows all things. He knew that you were going to not feel your best today. And, you know, I'm like, but that's so beautiful because in your neediness, you are loved and we want you here and we want to hear from you um, because your journey matters in the highs and the lows and all of the in-between. And so I am really grateful that God is allowing you to just show up in this raw form and not feeling great and allowing us to just enjoy the ride for what it is and to enjoy you in this most authentic state. And I think that is just such a sweet but hard thing, a gift that God has given. And, but with that, what I would love to hear, um, as an Enneagram coach who is a type two, you have some incredible strengths that naturally just pour out of you. That's just, it's just who you are. Can you just highlight some of those things that you see as a type two coach that just, um, permeate into the lives of those that you're helping? Like, what are those aspects and, and how do they show up in your coaching? I think one of um, my favorite things, I do premarital coaching mm -hmm. for our church when there's a, a couple that's getting married. The pastor has me do the premarital coaching and I had not done it my system that I used didn't include the Enneagram prior to being a coach. And so this is just in this past year, this is new for me to be able to incorporate the Enneagram into the premarital. Yeah. And I do some, some marriage coaching as well, but I think that has been a way that I've really seen God like work through me in that 
at the end of a session, there's never a, well, she was on your side. Obviously she took your side because I can see both sides. Yeah. I really do see where they're coming from. And I always said, you know, in my ministry prior to being a coach, when I would do marriage counseling, it was always, it wasn't marriage counseling. I'm just a translator. Yeah. You say it and I'll translate it so they can understand it right. because I get where you're coming from. And your words are never going to get her there <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or him there. Yeah. I mean, and that's, I love that, um, that picture because you're absolutely right. As we know the Enneagram better, especially as coaches who are well experienced, um, we do know the insights, the perspective of each of the potential spouses or spouses, depending on what stage they're at. And like you said, we can interpret and translate for one another so that there's a little bit more clarity. And what's so funny is we have um, two grown children now, and there will be even times that Jeff and I are doing the same old dance, you know, like we've always done. And even though we can take a step back most of the time, there are times that we're in it and we're not seeing each other's perspective. And one of our kids might go like kind of almost whisper like, um, remember, <laughs> they see it from this perspective over here. And it's like, dang it, they're right. We've taught them way too well. I mean, you know, because there's just that point of like, oh, you know, because you don't want everyone to be right. And yet you're so glad that they are because they're helping us to see things that we forget. Um, and that's the beautiful thing as coaches is we get to come alongside um, those that we're coaching, whether it's an individual, whether it's like you, like you, uh, premarital or marriage coaching, or even groups and teams and families to come alongside them and be that interpreter to help navigate those conversations so that there is more harmony or mediation or advocacy, which can be really tricky if we are all speaking to each other from our own perspective only and thinking that's it, that's the way it should be. We're not going to get anywhere with that, right? Is that what, you, what you've experienced? A hundred percent, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so what have been some of your personal challenges um, in like getting started with your coaching business? What have you had to overcome the most? Maybe one or two things that have been your biggest hurdles. Um, I mentioned that my husband is a three. Uh -huh. So, and he's very much the entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. and has had his own business and, you know, so... He was very excited for me to get myself out there and do all the things. And no, I just, I just could not. Um, I really struggled to promote myself. Sure. Once I got up and running and had uh, testimonials, you know, word of mouth, I'm so much more comfortable with that. Right. And so I know a lot of coaches will ask that question. And, uh, you know, I see it on the Facebook page and I think it, and Danielle, bless her heart. She helped me. If, if that's not you, then it doesn't have to be you. Right. Right. You can make your ministry and you can, mm -hmm. you know, you can charge your rates. You can do it at your speed and you can decide how many clients you can mm -hmm. handle. Right. Yeah, because in the beginning, there was the big stars in my eyes of, oh, this is going to be a great retirement income. And, you know, it's, you know, but ultimately, that's not as important to me as just being available right. to those who really want help. Yeah. So, and do it the way that God has created you with your bent, your desires, your passions, uh, your personality style, you know, because there are going to be some twos out there that are perfectly fine. Uh, getting out there and, you know, whether you want to call it promoting yourself, serving, helping, guiding, whatever, you know, because there's lots of different ways of viewing that. So there's going to be some out there that are going to, you know, go all out. But then, like you said, but God has put a different desire in your heart and a different disposition. And we want to be true to how he's created us. And I think that's why the Enneagram is so wonderful because it's not a one size fits all. Just because you're an Enneagram coach doesn't mean you have to look like, you know, uh, coach Susan or coach Bob or whoever, it's like, no, you need to be coach Jackie in the way that God created you. Mm -hmm. And that's actually a perfect segue to get into how God has called you to serve, um, with your coaching abilities. And can you like paint us a picture of who you, you, who are you usually serving 
And in what sphere does that usually happen in? I um, coach entirely from a biblical perspective. I avoid the secular world because I cannot make anything make sense without Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so um, I really, the longer I know the Lord and his word and the Enneagram, the more connecting points I find and the more both seem to ring true. Right. I do not think that the apostle Paul created the Enneagram and put it in there right? and hit it in the scriptures. But I do believe there are so many things. And even, I mean, as science advances, it just keeps proving the Bible. As yeah. psychology advances, it keeps proving scriptures that we've heard all our lives. Yeah. And so, you know, there's just so much about knowing yourself and the inner workings of your heart that really do um, help us see how God created us to be. And so that's, you know, I warn clients right up front and because I don't always know if they are, you know, their background. Yeah. And so I tell them there will be, you know, I'm going to involve Jesus in this. He's going to be right there in the sessions and he's going to speak to me and I'm going to speak to you and it's all going to be a conversation. Yeah. And so that's, um, that's who I get primarily. There was one guy that said, Oh, I went to I went to church as a kid. I, I'm, I'm fine with it. Mm-hmm. But at the end of our sessions, it was like, that was a lot of Jesus. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I didn't get any further yeah. and, um, sessions with him. And that was, that was fine. Yeah. I, I feel like I planted some seeds. God opened that door and some seeds were planted. Sure. So yeah. um, and- I love, my passion is for the family. I think mm-hmm. the families are being attacked on every side and so anything i can do to make marriages healthier right a healthy marriage is a lot more likely to be healthy parents Mm. and raising their kids in a healthy environment which means not perfect not that they do everything right but they're willing to see things from different perspectives and so anytime i can help a family a couple um you know parents understand their teenagers better and have less friction. And a lot of times, um, I think that the family is going to be the one that changes the world, but I think the church is going to be the instrument that God uses. Mm. And so if the church, if the clergy, the staff, if they are not healthy in their home and their relationships, it's really hard for them to lead their people to have healthy family relationships. Right. So yeah, the family unit is so important and it is amazing how much clarity the Enneagram gives to us parents, first and foremost, um, one about our own style of relating, whether it's healthy or less healthy and how we can align ourselves with gospel truth to then have a healthier alignment, which, will only benefit our family. Um, So that's first and foremost. But then once we're able to know what our kids' personalities are, um, when they're old enough, to to be able then to navigate those conversations that we can speak directly to their heart, their perspective, the bent that God has created them to be, so that our heart's desire actually lands on them in a way that they can hear and attune to and agree with, um, is so much better and it's not going to always be perfect because, you know, we're in relationships on this side of heaven, but using the Enneagram and family dynamics is definitely an amazing, um, tool to bring that clarity and that understanding that you just can't really get anywhere else. Would you agree? Absolutely. Okay. So the next thing I'd love to hear is, is that you've used the Enneagram a lot in your local church. Is that right? Yeah. As much as I can get (laughs) people to let me. Yeah. Um, What has been some of the positive outcomes in your experiences in using it in the local church? And what does that even look like when you go into a local church and use the Enneagram? I've done the premarital counseling and even gone into churches with the church staff. And help them see how their different gifts, their different motivations 
play into the teamwork that they're trying to create. Mm -hmm. No, it's okay to hand that baton off to an associate because that's where their giftedness is, or it's going to come so much easier for them. It's natural. It's like breathing. Whereas for you, it's laborious. So um, helping them to understand who they are and, and who the people on their team are. Mm. That's been great too. And other than that, it's just speaking the wisdom of the Enneagram without necessarily speaking the wisdom of the Enneagram. Mm Mm-hmm kind of sneak it in and wait for people to ask questions right yeah because I'm very patient <laughs> yeah because the Enneagram brings so much clarity I know a lot of times and tell me if this is true for you too a lot of times I'll just talk or I'll, I'll like describe what I'm seeing in a person because maybe their type is you know like uh peeking through and you can kind of see maybe that's their type but you know you don't want to type someone so you're just kind of like hey is this true for you and this and that and they kind of look at you like how do you know this? So, well, this is kind of creepy and weird, but awesome all at the same time. And then, you know, okay, I guess that's their type. And then you can kind of work with them in helping and guiding them and bringing out the best of who they are without them fully knowing, you know, exactly what approach you're coming from. Has that happened for you too? Yes. Yeah. And people really appreciate that approach, I think, because You know, we're not, we don't have to come through the front door with the Enneagram all the time. Really, people just want to know that they are seen and heard and attuned to, and that we're coming right alongside them and guiding them, you know, on the path that God has created for them to be who they are. Um, What is your experience with that? Okay, this is going to not make the video, but (laughs) (laughs) as you were speaking, I was thinking about my own kids, my grown married kids and kids in law, they they've not taken an assessment. They don't want to talk about it. It's like I, I don't understand why they're not connecting with it. Mm-hmm. And I don't really, I don't really type people. Yeah. I don't I know how they behave. I don't know why they behave that way. That's they have to figure that out on their own. So I just, while you were talking, I just kind of was off on this tangent of why, you know, that, which happens as moms, you know, why won't my own kids buy into this? And I don't, I don't know why we have a great relationship. Mm -hmm. Our family dynamics are incredible. We love family vacations together and spend as much time as we can. I mean, my grandkids are practically grown now, but it just, so anyway, yeah. I got lost. That's okay. Whatever your question was. I no, lost. that's fine. Yeah, I was just um I was just basically, let's see. Um Yeah, just that people not going through the front door, but kind of coming through the back door and they just want to feel heard, seen and attuned to and I was asking what's your experience oh. of that like? That's a it's a great um tool in a coaching session when I'm with a couple yeah. and knowing their um, knowing their type and understanding how I can say things to them mm-hmm. so that it'll land right and they won't be offended by it right and it's just it just makes conversation so much more comfortable because I get you yeah I know that if I say it this way it's going to sound offensive but if I say it like this then it's going to work for you. Right. Yeah. And most of us in our just everyday life prior to using the Enneagram was, I'm just going to say what I think the way I would normally say it. And that should land on everyone the right way because I'm basically right. (laughs) That's usually how we all talk, right? We don't know of other ways of doing it. But with the Enneagram, we're able to take off our glasses, our lenses, our perspective and put on another person's and going, oh, if I word it this way, it's going to resonate with them and we can become more aligned together than misaligned and, you know, at each other. Basically, we can have more harmony and work well together to achieve like the goals or the relationship we're desiring because I've attuned to them and hopefully then they will attune to me as well. And it's kind of reciprocated. So that's one thing I love about the Enneagram and whether it's through coaching or just our everyday relationships, understanding the lenses through which people see the world and operate from can help us in every sphere of our life. Um, 
But as a coach, it's super powerful. And I would love to hear, how did you even get on the path of becoming a coach? How did that even come to your mind, you know, like a hope, a desire? And then what was the path you decided to go down? And what's that experience been like? Well, my, I was an associate pastor in a church um, and through COVID, I was home. I was pastoring from home and connecting with all the people. And, and um, saw your course and I thought, I don't know if I'm even going to have an income. Mm. So I didn't want to spend the money to take a course. And then the stimulus check <laughs> showed up. <laughs> Just at the right time. And my husband, bless his heart, said, this is you. Mm. This is totally you. You need to do this. Oh, I love that. And so he really encouraged me. So I took your course and I became certified mm. and still didn't know my type for sure. Uh -huh. It's just fascinating. I, I'm the only human that can actually be two types at once, apparently. <laughs> That's what I thought. Um, or I'm just really so confused that I can't figure out what type I am. And it was very difficult mm. to do a coaching session when, I mean, I would fake it. I would either say I'm a nine or I'm a two, you know, I would try to sound confident, but <laughs> right. I wasn't. And so I, I was so blessed recently when I heard Jesse Eubanks say that he was a four for a hundred years before he finally right. realized he was a well, and so, I don't know if you knew Russ Hudson, thought he was a four and found out much later that he was a five, you know, so, and yeah. that's like, you know, one of the top Enneagram teachers out there. So it yeah. happens a lot. It does. Yeah. And so I, that made me feel a little bit better, but um, I would go through the coaching session because I felt like I could understand them more than I could understand myself. Yeah. And I did. I did freebies at first, all my friends, you know, it's like, okay, I need somebody to practice on. Mm. I need to practice on you. And truly that, that would be what my advice to coaches when they are get all upset because, you know, I'm advertising, I'm not getting any clients, but, you know, use that time to just keep coaching, yeah. just keep coaching. Even if it's, you know, you're not making any money. I mean, I don't want you to start to, <laughs> if it's your <laughs> primary livelihood, but um, the, I learn more from coaching. I mean, I read and listen a lot because I love the Enneagram and there's, everybody teaches it the same thing with different language mm -hmm. and it's some of it really just hits. Right. And so, um, just do it. Just, just talk to people, get to know people. You don't have to be good at it. Yeah. Well, and like you said, you, <laughs> you learn, you learn so much from just those interactions, those engagements with people. Mm -hmm. um, and I would totally agree. I think those are my favorite things is to do coaching sessions because I've learned so much more about all nine types by doing those one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, they give me so much better insight into their own world. And then I kind of, you know, I'll jot, you know, uh, good nuggets down, you know, for me to remember for the next time I'm with that same type. And they give me the vocabulary, the insight, their pain points, their um, the things that have been helpful and transformative. And so I 100% agree, just get out there, get coaching, experience it. We all have to learn and we're all going to stumble, you know, but we'll learn from our stumbling what works and what didn't work. Um, and people are super gracious when we're starting out uh, learning. And so I think um, a lot of people don't get into coaching because they have head trash or limiting beliefs where, or self-doubt, if you want to call it like, oh, I couldn't do this. Not me. You know, Beth could do it or Jackie can do it. It's like, nah, guys, really, I have head trash all the time. And if you're thinking, but you're your Enneagram coach. Yeah, I know. And I'm still a human being <laughs> and I'm still a type nine who constantly has this uh, soundtrack in my head that says, no one wants to listen to you. Don't assert yourself. And you might be thinking, but Beth, you've been studying the Enneagram forever. Like, why isn't that gone? It's like, because that's this side of the fall. I need Jesus every day, all the time to be my rock, to be the one that helps me to speak and to do the calling that he has placed in my life. If left up to me, I wouldn't. And that makes me sad for myself because 
I'm so grateful and thankful for all the things that God has done um, through my coaching and writing books and all that stuff, but it wouldn't be without him and the calling that he has on my life. But all nine types have their own type specific head trash. And uh, Jackie, like what are some of the kind of the limiting beliefs or head trash that you've been able to see more clearly that you've had to like overcome again all the time? So it's not like it's gone. Uh, but what are the, some, what's those limiting beliefs that keep popping up for you? Well, since I have so much nine in me, <laughs> I have equally heard that nobody wants to hear what you have to say. Yeah. And I had, um, I had an employer at one point who reminded me that consistently. You, what? Don't blow their phones up during COVID. Don't blow their phones up. They don't want to hear from you. Mm. Leave people alone. I knew that wasn't true because I could see the blessings coming back, but you just, you hear things yeah. and they just seem to lodge in your brain and, right. and are, you become crippled by it. Yeah. And so that was as, as a two and struggling with shame, mm -hmm. I realized that more and more, if I'm feeling shame, like I'm not enough, like I'm not good enough, or I can't do this right, somebody else can do it better, I need to just stay in the background and empty the trash and clean the toilets because that's where I'm comfortable serving, Yeah. then I'm not giving the Holy Spirit a chance to really use me in the way he wants to. Yeah. And so to get past that, you're not enough, you're not good enough, you're not smart enough, you're not young enough, you know, all of the things I think all women especially feel mm -hmm. um, and just magnify it by a thousand. And that was me. Mm -hmm. A lot of it was my, um, my childhood. Mm -hmm. My mother struggled with some mental illness issues and she was extremely critical. Mm -hmm. And I owned every word right. that she ever said. And I carried it into my 60s. You know, it's just, I still can hear that. And so I think, I think the voice of my inner critic and my one wing is probably my mother's voice mm. or maybe a boss's voice, but right. um, my mother loved me fiercely. She did. And every criticism was to help me. Right. And she would tell me this is constructive criticism. Right, right, right. But it just caused me to believe that I'm not enough. And if I'm not enough, why in the world do I think I could coach somebody else? Right. Yeah. Because the one of the greatest fears of the type two is rejection. And when someone is giving you, even if it's constructive criticism, it, I'm assuming it feels like rejection. Is that right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, <laughs> and then the shame wells up and, you know, on and on. So what has it shame been? Shame does not come from the Lord. Mm. Shame is right. Shame comes straight from the pits of hell. Right, right. Holy Spirit might convict you, he'll speak to you, he'll lead you and direct you, but he will never oh, no. ever make you feel ashamed. Yeah. And so when I realized all of the shame I was feeling of not being enough was not a good voice from a good place. Right. Then I could just, you know, push that aside. Not today, Satan. Right, right. Not today. Yeah. And then once you've pushed through and you've allowed the Holy Spirit to enable you to push through and to move forward, what has been the experience when you've showed up with clients? What is that feeling that you've had inside watching them transform and grow? It, it, even, even before I see growth and transformation in them, mm -hmm. I feel so energized and empowered and Full. I never feel closer to God than when I'm than when I'm in a coaching situation. Yeah, I would agree. Because I can just feel Him using me. Right. Like Coach Beth, you know, same Coach Jackie. When I am there, I'm in my sweet spot, yeah. and because I'm I'm not a rogue scholar. I'm not super smart. I have a lot of struggles with comprehending what I'm reading and I read it again and again and again. <laughs> and, and, you know, I feel like I, I'm really not smart enough to do this. Mm. That's beautiful. I'm really not smart enough to do this, but God is. Right. Exactly. And he chose me. I don't know why. I don't know why he chose me to be his vessel to yeah. do this. But when I'm coaching or when I'm helping somebody, I just 
feel the power of the Holy Spirit flowing through me. Words come out of my mouth sometimes. And Beth, I'm like, where did that come from? Right. I, don't, I don't know where that came from, but it was good. Somebody write it down because right, it was right. really, I'm not going to remember later. Yeah, capture that someone. Yeah, yeah it's just, it just was really good to watch God at work in me. Yeah. So it, it has it really transformed me. But yeah, when I see it happen in my clients and sometimes... Sometimes I don't even see it. Sometimes it goes around, you know, different channels and, and, you know, the pastor will come to me and say, oh, so-and-so told me that because of your Enneagram insights in their mm. um, pre marital coaching session, they really are not struggling like they had before. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes they don't tell me. Right. You're like, that would have been great <laughs> to know. <laughs> yeah. It kind of. Yeah, I'd like to know if what I'm doing is helping you yeah. because it's making me feel really good. But I'd right. like to know if it's helping you. Yeah, and then you get those, you know, you ask for a letter, a testimonial, just so that you can put it on your website, right? And the things people write, it's like, really? Yeah, it's such it a was blessing. that meaningful to you? Yeah, and that's just beautiful yeah. to see it, you know, in print. Yeah. I always tell people, I can't believe this is a real job. Like it literally is the best job ever to, like you said, just to be, you know, the mouthpiece or the vessel that God uses uh, to bring about growth and healing and transformation in another person's life, the clarity that they've been looking for. And we just get to participate, you know. Um, and for those that are out there, you know, at your Enneagram coach, we literally help you with the first five sessions um, and guide, we have guide sheets that guide you as you guide your clients and you just get to participate. You just get to be there and watch and, and give some insights and answer questions and hear their story and watch them unpack it and then transform and grow. And it's, I literally, I sit there and I think, how is this a real job? Do you ever feel that way too? <laughs> yes. Yes. And I do a lot of gratis work. And I think that's because I'm a two, you know, I just want to help you. And that if you can't, you know, if you going through hard times, you especially need help. And so yeah. I, you know, I do it and I, and so I don't know, I think they know because of that, that I'm really invested in them, yes. that it's not just a job for me. Right. But then once in a while, when, I'm not going to lie. And this doesn't need to be on the, <laughs> <laughs> but when I do get paid, like my full price, mm -hmm. it's like, it, it does. I know you, you've said, and you teach us, you have to charge for the value that they're getting Yeah, and they have to have some skin in the game. And when I do, even, you know, even if I do half price, it's just, it just gives value to what I do in a different way. Right. You know, I'm not right. I don't, I don't know how to say it well, but it's not about making money. Right. But when you do make money, it gives validity mm -hmm. in a whole different kind of way. Absolutely. And it also, like you said, it also, they have skin the game. And so they participate in their own transformation because what you pay for, you pay attention to, and mm -hmm. it's this win-win situation. So they win by investing in themselves and doing that work that they are really signing up for that they want. But then you also get to take care of your family. And like you said, it's not about the money. It's about caring for the people that God has entrusted to us with the right amount of income that we need. And I think it's such a um, gift to have a job, a career, a passion, a calling, whatever you want to name it, that not only blesses others greatly, but it really blesses us and our family. And like you said, it gives that validity, validity and really satisfaction to participate in someone else's growth um, while it also blesses us. So I think there's, it's, no shame in it. I think it's a beautiful thing that God has enabled this kind of um, kind of job out there that we get to walk alongside others. I mean, it's just, I just don't know how to, to describe it to people, but it, it's literally the best job ever 
on multiple fronts and to watch God work in and through the people we work with, but also ourselves, it's, it's just such a blessing. And I can't, I can't say enough about it. Um, it's like you're on a, a trajectory to, as a coach, you're not only making other people's lives better, you're making your, you're enriching your own life because every time you coach, you learn something new about, you know, maybe about a different type, but about yourself for sure. Right. Absolutely. Well, Jackie, thank you so much for just sharing your story, especially when you're sick with potentially COVID. So <laughs> sorry that you are not feeling good, but thank you for extending yourself with such grace and kindness, sharing with us what becoming an Enneagram coach has meant to you, how you're probably like a lot of people out there, like, I don't want to market myself. And I always tell people, we're not talking about marketing yourself. We want you to, to share the gifts and the passions that God has put in you and just watch him work. But there's a lot of people out there that feel that same way coming to this, or they have that head trash or limiting beliefs. And thank you for just sharing how you've overcome some of those hurdles. And yet we're still in it. We're still working with those every day, um, but that you're doing the work and you're seeing the fruit from that within yourself and the people that you are blessing. So just thank you so much for showing up uh, today, but also in all of those people's lives, because there's that ripple effect that you won't always get to see or hear about, but we do know and trust that God is working in and through people that we've touched. So thank you so much. Um, I would love for you to share with people where they can find you because they're probably thinking, I would love to work with Jackie. She is my kind of coach. Um, so where can they find you, Jackie? Well, I am in the YEC network. So that's probably the best place to find me Great. or email me at jbradycoaching.com. Great. Yeah. And for everyone out there, if you uh, are like, well, where is that? Go to my enneagramcoach.com. And that is where all of our coaches are. So just look up Jackie Brady um, and you'll find Jackie right there. You'll see her picture and you can actually reach out to her through her page on the network um, or like her email, like she had said, and we'll put these in the show notes as well. Um, well, thanks everyone for joining us today. You know, I am so thankful that you have come, that you get to hear stories like Jackie who have really felt God calling us to step out in faith and just share what we have learned about the Enneagram for our own personal growth, but that we actually transfer it to the next person by becoming a certified Enneagram coach. So for those of you that have, you know, felt that transformation internally and you can't stop talking about it with others and you're wondering, you know, maybe I would love to become an Enneagram coach. If you if you have that little inkling of an idea, we encourage you to go ahead and get that mini course that I already talked about because next week is when we open registration for the Come an Enneagram Coach course, June 5th through the 9th. And so take the free mini course just to kind of get a feel for what it's about. And all you got to do is go to yourenneagramcoach.com forward slash mini course, that's just one word, uh, to get your free course where we're going to walk you through a lot of the key elements to kind of get a feel for it. Um, and if you're like, okay, wow, becoming a coach sounds really interesting, but I need a little bit more information. Well, then sign up for our one, one of our webinars that I'm going to be hosting next week. And next week, I'm going to explain all the ins and outs to the course and what it looks like to become a certified coach. All you have to do is go to enneagramwebinar.com. That's enneagramwebinar.com to grab your seat. And I get to share with you all the things that God is doing. So don't let doubt lead you. Let God's calling lead you. And then he will take it from there. And we are happy to help support you. Thanks again, guys, for joining us. And remember that the Enneagram reveals your need for Jesus, not your need to work harder, because it is the gospel that transforms us.